to, to hear Waltz for five minutes of questioning. All right, thank you. We'll see if the technology holds this time. Um, hey, Dr. Uh, Blevins, the uh, NSF supports, uh, I think as you mentioned, the Wall of Wind uh, experimental facility in Florida International University. It's, as you know, it's capable of simulating Category 5 hurricanes with winds over 150 miles an hour. Uh, how is research performed at user facilities like the Wall of Wind then uh, how's that research then transferred to industry? How is it transferred to stakeholders uh, to, to make improvements, to improve the resiliency of buildings and other forms of infrastructure to windstorm hazards? Thank you. Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So in facilities like the Wall of Wind or the Boundary Layer Wind Tunnel, we collect a lot of data on different scenarios and those data are used to improve to develop improved predictive capabilities for windstorms and other types of events and so through improving those predictive capabilities and our simulations we're able to actually provide input to those who are developing the codes and standards for the buildings and and so that's the pathway yes um how is it then? I mean, are you seeing it really incorporated? Are you satisfied with how it's used? Do you wish industry would do would do more? You know, if you had it your way, kind of kind of a thing. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, I understand the great research that's going on. I'm I'm just trying to better understand how it's utilized. Well, it's interesting that you should mention industry because also in Florida we have a relatively new what we call industry university. Coordination Research Center, IUCRC, Cooperative Research Center. And that particular center is at Florida International. It's called the Center for Wind Hazard and Infrastructure Performance, or WIP. And the way that IUCRCs work is they, uh, the university scientists and engineers are doing the research, but they have an advisory board that, that consists of folks from industry. And in this particular one, it's from the construction industry, from the insurance industry, from the risk assessment industry that are sitting on this board. And those folks are actually selecting the basic pre-competitive research that is gonna be done by the university researchers. And so in that way, we really are working hand in hand with our stakeholders from industry. And you know, early, uh, early signs from that IUCRC are that there, there's some early interest in some uptake from some of what's going on in, in the research. Well, that's, no, that's great to hear. And particularly that the insurance industry is there. I think one of the, one of the issues is that we continue to, for a variety of reasons that are probably too complex for my couple of minutes, but for a variety of reasons, we tend to subsidize and reinforce bad behavior um, in the aftermath uh, of these storms. So uh, that's that's reassuring, uh, and I'd, I'd love to learn more um, uh, uh, about that facility and who's participating in the uptake. Um, just in the time I have remaining, Dr. Uh, for Dr. Weaver, uh, I already mentioned, you know, the 125,000 homes from Hurricane Andrew, what our state and local officials in Florida did to develop stronger building codes. And given that NIST supports research and development to improve um, uh, model building codes and voluntary consensus standards, best practices, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on how the MWRP works with standards bodies like the International Code Council? Council? and communities uh, to adopt windstorm resilient building codes uh, to avoid widespread losses similar to those uh, from Hurricane Andrew? Sure, sure. Uh, it, it, great question. So NIST does not uh, regulate or develop the actual building code. What NIST's role principally is in developing actionable science that could be used to guide the processes that underpin uh, standards development uh, and, and, and code development and implementation. Um, so a great example, not, not necessarily related to hurricanes at this point, but a, but a very new example is that out of our um, Joplin, Missouri tornado investigation, one of the recommendations was to develop tornado maps to guide um, the implementation of uh, design, uh, safe design for the tornado hazard. Now, this is the first time this is ever being done. 
uh, previous to that event, it was just, you know, act of God, you can't design for tornadoes, but now there are provisions uh, that could be voluntarily used um, to design for tornadoes. And, and that's, that's going to be coming up in the next American Society of Civil Engineers publication that comes out in 2022 for those guidance. So we, we work more on the scientific side. I mentioned the measurement science issue with um, the hazards that occur in extreme, uh, you know, the extreme winds in hurricanes. And we certainly look at, uh, look at that. Um, we are mission assigned by FEMA to produce uh, wind maps. We've done it for Hurricane Irma. We've done it for Hurricane Dorian. We were expecting that to make landfall, as you know, as a, as a very strong storm. Luckily, it turned at the last minute. That would have been a, a significant disaster, of course. And so um, we're, we're on the front lines of that uh, in, in many different ways. Well, thanks so much. And I certainly didn't um, uh, didn't intend to suggest that that NIST would create uh, uh, codes or, or or standards. I think that is rightly uh, at the local level. Um, but but I think that no, that's a great example of, of what um, of what you just laid out. And Madam Chairman, I looks looks like I'm over my time, and I yield. Thank you so much. Yeah, that that was great. Thank you. And and with that, we're going to.